and welcome back to the New York Jets franchise rebuild. Here today will be the mid-season report as we're entering so far so far this season, excuse me. The New York Jets have been playing very well. We're 4 and 2. We're on a bit of a winning streak. I no. Uh, we just uh, got a bounce back victory, excuse me. But starting off this season 3 and 0, dropped two games and then we beat the Patriots last week. But welcome back to the channel, everyone. I hope you're all having a great day. Please leave a like, comment down below what you thought of, the, of my decision making, and don't forget to subscribe. So, let's start off this episode with going through some stats, and we'll look through our stats uh, for right now, and we'll go uh, player by player, or kind of positional group, I guess. But let's start with Steven James. So far, nine touchdowns to seven interceptions, 1,300 yards passing, sacked nine times, 62 completion percentage. Overall, not a terrible start, but not also a great start. I, I don't really know what to think of James. Um, from a game manager perspective, I think he's doing great with it. But from being the quarterback of the future, I don't know. So far this year, he's only had two games where he hasn't thrown an interception, and three games he's thrown multiple. So, we have to see. Um, but there's still a lot of football left to go in throughout this season. There's still 11 games. So, overall, I think James can continue to get better and continue to improve. So, I still believe in him. Um, I just don't know if he's going to be like a different make difference maker at quarterback. When we turn to the running back position, Michael Carter last week rushed for three touchdowns and he looked fantastic. And he's looked fantastic all season. So far, I'm very happy with his production, but this is obviously the question mark with him is always the big play factor. And it's gonna be a question I kind of have to answer all the way until the end of the season. His contract is up and he's a player that I'm kind of actually on the fence about. Even though, yeah, he's coming off of almost a 1,400-yard season. We've seen him score over 10 times. But I just don't know. He doesn't hit the big play. I know I can hand the ball off and get four yards, but is that enough to pay a guy five to seven million dollars a year? Personally, I don't think so, um, but we'll see. For Adam Wright, for being the power back and finding five touchdowns throughout six games, very happy with his performance so far. I think we got to get the ball more into his hands. He has that power to speed that really helps him. So I definitely want to get him more chances with running the football. But, you know, of course, we will see. And then obviously Robert Gordon, who's been making um, more, getting more playing time because of the third down running back snaps. And he's played OK. So far, the running game has worked very well, and I'm happy with it. When we look at our passing game, Elijah Moore leads the team with uh, over 400 yards and three touchdowns, and he's been playing great football. He's a contract that we will be working on today. Um, for Brandon Cooks, second on the team, um, so far he's definitely a player that I want the ball more in his hands. He's definitely he definitely feels like he is slowing down. Now maybe it's just me trying to get the ball more to Elijah Moore, and that could easily be it as well. I don't know just yet. Uh, then we have Jawan Johnson because he played a lot. But Meredith last week had his best day. Happy so far with his playing time. Just got it. He has to stay healthy. Uh, last week he caught seven balls for 70 yards and no touchdown. But you know, so far in three games, very good production for him. Um, but overall, we need to see this passing game really take the next level, in my opinion as Chad Jackson has four catches for zero yards. Gotta love to see that. When we look at the offensive line, I definitely think when Mekhi Becton was out for the three games he was out for, it really proved we need him. So he's definitely a guy that I will definitely work out a contract, and that's gonna happen also today between him and Elijah Moore. But so far, no sacks allowed. Uh, Charles Leno has struggled the most. Uh, same with John Meyer, Josh Myers, but these are two backups. So offensive line has been playing very well. Defensively, Jalen Smith leads us in tackles. 
for tackles for loss, it's Blake Cashman. Happy with Quinton Williams, bounce back type of season. Gotta see the sack numbers go up. But so far, Jonathan Jackson and Theodore Dickerson, they combined for 11 sacks. Gotta see more from Myers, who's been picking it up for the last few games. Fletcher Cox has three sacks, happy with his production. Just wanna see more from Williams, to be honest. And then in terms of turnovers, you know, Jalen Bonds, James Bradbury, both tied for interception leaders. But gotta see more big plays, but I don't think I can be too upset with our defense. They've made so many plays throughout this season. In terms of kicking, Justin Tucker's been basically perfect except for one missed field goal. Punting's been solid, and then kick returning has been doing well. I did decide to change it instead of Sean. It's gonna be Ben Toon. I wanna to get him some more development, and I think at least getting him on the field, it helps. I don't know. Eh, a little bit of XP, so hopefully that helps out a little bit. But let's go through some contracts here. So we have really the two big ones, Makai Becton and Elijah Moore that we have to decide on. And then we have the veterans we brought in, like James Bradbury, Fletcher Cox, Grover Stewart, the question mark with uh, Michael Carter, and then a couple other rotational players, and even Blake Cashman's contracts up, some and some backups as well. But you guys know me in this series, and in my series, I tend to like to overpay for players. See, I don't think that Makai Becton really would want about $14 million a year. This is kind of how I do it, is that, you know, I bump it up, see where it is, give or take for the first season, and then we'll go from there. So I want it to be right around 17. I think that's fair. And I want to make it a multi-year deal. So five years, $85 million. I think that's very fair. More than what he wanted, that's literally double. For, you know, a top tier left tackle like Makai, we just have to give him this contract. So the offer has been made and Makai Becton has resigned. Now I know down below you guys are gonna sit here and say to me, you know, Laura, you overpaid. You know, you're giving, you know, a 25 year old tackle so much money, you know, who didn't even want that. That's just Madden being Madden. I don't believe a top 10 tackle would want anything less than about $15 million a season. So I think that's very fair. And then when we turn to Elijah Moore, same type of concept here. I don't think that Elijah Moore would want $11 million a season. You know, he's a, what? He's 39th ranked, you know, and he's gonna develop more as the as he's only 24 years old. So what's fair for him? And with his contract, I'm gonna bump it up to about 15 and we'll go from there. It's still not top tier money. It's not like contracts in the real NFL, which are insane to me, but um, we're gonna make it exactly 15 million over six years. I want this to be a large contract because I want him to be around for the entirety of this rebuild. So six years, 80 or $90 million. Maybe even he needs more than that, um, but I'm happy with that contract. Uh, maybe I'm also playing towards what Madden would, uh, the limitations that Madden does have, uh, because I don't know even if he would want that type of money, maybe closer to tw uh, 20 a year, but I think it's still somewhat fair. In regards to the rest of these contracts here, I'm not going to work on any of them right now. Like, Michael Carter, as I've talked about, I don't know if... I mean, I could give him this contract, but, you know, he's he's my starting running back. I, I would want to give him more money, starting caliber money, instead of a backup running back type of money. Uh, but he's really the one that I have to make a decision on. For everyone else here, I mean... Sure, maybe Blake Cashman will come back. Um, I mean, we drafted his replacement technically, so maybe not. Um, Robert Gordon, I don't know. There's some backs in this class that I really like. Uh, we have some decisions to make. Um, I don't know just yet. But let's go through the draft and see who's out there. We have our focus scouting, and I want to show you guys my thought process even on this draft class. 
So some of my favorite players here, and I've already kind of started to go through it. I have right now 23 players on my board. Um, but let's go with some standouts and um, let's go by position. Um, nothing at safety. I really like the top two corners in this class. Uh, Bradley McLeod here, who has a catching, a press, a zone. You just gotta sit here and think from an athletic standpoint, he's fantastic. And skills, you know, he's also fantastic. I don't really need to know the man coverage, even if that's an F. I know he's good in zone coverage. Worst case scenario, I put him at strong safety. And corner is definitely something that I want to focus in on, especially because of the fact that um, we have a lot of veterans there, and I would like to continue to get younger. There's a lot of corners in this class that I really do like, all the way up to Sheldon Love, who is probably realistically the player that I would go get, who has Bs and press and zone. That does tell me, even from a slot perspective, that he has um, some man skills as well and a hit power too. Um, another positional group to, or another player to really that I'm circling for you guys is at a running back. Taylor Newberry here, who's a day three prospect, but he has A, ball carrier vision, A, carrying, D, catching, which is fine. I, he might be more of an elusive back. In terms of athletic traits, he's fantastic. Can't really ship you, but you know, he can make some plays. And the only thing else we know about him is the injury. And spin move is an F, but injuries in A, which I would really like. So Taylor could be our new running back. I do like my running backs. And I do, I have the basic philosophy that you do not sign your running backs to top dollar. In terms of wide receivers, Phil Costello here, who's 5'7", who has good deep route running, deep catch in traffic, he might be a solid prospect in terms of athleticism. You know, I really look at athletes first and then put those guys on my board. Um, but overall, really what I want to get out of this draft when the draft does happen is definitely hitting on a corner, maybe another linebacker, maybe some offensive line help, um, maybe another wide receiver. Because one thing that we, when I do this type of stuff is um, I look at both age and how much longer players are going to be around on the team. So, you know, I look at my offense for you guys. Um, and yeah, I mean, wide receiver would definitely be a major question of mine. I don't know if I could go into a season with our third receiver as Chad Jackson and Ben Toon. And even though, yeah, Brandon Cooks has more, a couple more years on his deal, he is 30 years old. Regression has hurt him a lot already from his first year here to his second year here. So he, I don't know about Cooks' future, at least on paper right now. And for the rest of this team, for the rest of this offense, I mean, Doug Thomas's contract is coming up at the end of this, at the end of next season. And same with Jack Contlin, who Contlin's 30 years old, so we replace him with a new rookie tackle. Probably ideal. You know, I don't want to be paying all my offensive linemen. You know, there's always a positional group that you have to not pay. And then defensively. I mean, we brought in Grover Stewart and Fletcher Cox. I do think David York with this year development can improve. So defensive tackle definitely does become a circle of mine. And then in terms of linebacker, I mean, J.J. Cunningham Dickerson, who got the star dev last week. Um, these are two young guys that I really like to replace Smith and Cashman. But I don't know if, you know, J.J. is the future. I think Dickerson can be. And then in terms of corners, I mean, you know, probably Jackson will be traded. Not this week. I don't think I will. I might make a, I'm going to look at the trade block and see if there's anyone I like to maybe just improve this team. But Jackson's going to enter his last year of his deal next year. So maybe we move off of him. And then Brad Berry's on a one year deal. So that's kind of how I look at things um, just to just so you guys get my thought process on it. But let's go through, uh, let me go through the uh, trade block and see if there's any pros or any players that I would like to add to this team because, you know, 
this is right before the trade deadline. So I went through the trade block players and sure, you know, there's players like Derek Carr out there and there's a lot of good running backs. Um, but I don't think that I'm going to make any sort of trade because it's kind of just me forcing it. Um, and if I look at my current roster, I mean, sure, there's a couple players that I kind of look at and say, yeah, could I get like a fifth round pick for? Absolutely. And, you know, we, we could just bring in a veteran for that quality depth. And, you know, one player would be like a Michael Carter II, who's, you know, our fifth corner, who has some solid skills and would get us a draft pick. But, you know, I don't really want the draft pick. I want the quality depth more than anything. You know, another player would be, let me think, um, looking through this roster, probably no one else. I mean, one thing that we could decide is, do we move off of Charles Leno and basically try to get a different veteran or younger backup tackle? That is probably the only move that I would consider making at this moment in time. Um, so maybe we'll actually do that, because I think that's a good idea to do so. So let's see if I can make a trade. And yeah, so let me introduce you guys to Noah Barry here. Now Noah is a third year tackle who has star dev. It's definitely intriguing to me. You know, he has solid strength. The only skill he does not really do well in is power, um, we, which we could work on throughout the next few seasons. but. He's solid in pass blocking all around. He's a solid run blocker. You know, I think we should make a trade here for Noah. So uh, with this trade, you know, we'll try to get, we'll give them Charles Leno in return. Actually, I don't even think they can take Leno's contract. Okay, never mind. <laughs> and a deal has been done. We have traded Charles Leno for Jake Matthews and we gave the Falcons a sixth round pick. So we're basically swapping tackles, veteran tackles, and giving up a sixth round draft pick. I'm happy with this trade um, for a couple reasons. Number one, Leno has struggled throughout this season for us, and we're only moving off of basically a sixth round pick, which I'm okay with. And we're getting basically, you know, a top tier insurance policy, you know? A top 32 left tackle in this league who has, you know, good strength. He has, in my opinion, better ratings all around. And, you know, with the injury history of Makai Beckett, we definitely need to have a solid backup player um, at tackle. And I think Jake Matthews provides that. So that's the big trade. And let's now look at our draft picks. So without the sixth round pick, we still have seven picks. We still have the Green Bay third round pick. I don't know how we got it, but we did. I don't remember. Um, but we have two threes, um, still our first and second. But very happy with this trade, keeping um, getting ourselves a quality backup. And let's finish this episode off with a couple upgrades here. We'll start off with Theodore here, who I've been kind of working on his pass blocking throughout this season. I really want to get it up to a 70, at least until the end of the year. So we'll do that for our formal first round draft pick of this past year, which bumps him up to a 77 overall. We get plus one awareness, plus two man coverage, a tackle, and zone. Very happy with that upgrade. Definitely making him much more of a complete player. Getting that co those coverage ratings will definitely help him out. And then finally, we have Doug Thomas here, who is, you know, a third year guard who's played well and has developed so far very well. He was actually our second pick in the whole series. Uh, what I really want to work on with him, let's see, let's do Agile. Doesn't bump him up an overall, um, but we get Awareness, we get a Strength boost too, and Run Block Finesse. So happy with that upgrade. Here are his ratings after the um, upgrade, and he has more strength, which I'm very happy about. But that's today's episode, guys. I know it's a little bit of a shorter rant, <laughs> as you guys know I love to do. Um, please leave a like, comment down below what you thought of both the signings of Elijah Moore and Makai Beckett. I know there are more than they wanted, um, but I think it's more fair. I try to make it as realistic as possible. It's in my opinion, it's very difficult with Madden and how much they limit you with things. 
and don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment down below. And guys, I will see you in the next one.